Hi there. So, uh, so it's been a while since we start since we talked about complex functions, um, and uh, in the previous video we we started talking about functions of the form uh, w equals z to the power of n for uh, n uh, some positive integer, some positive integer, and uh, we explored this uh, mapping uh, for um, for the for the for the specific case where we looked at the z plane. Uh, and, and the image uh, image w plane uh, w goes uh, as z to the power of n and let's focus on the case when n is 3 so so we focused on the case where we looked at a unit circle in the z plane uh, and saw what is the image of this unit circle under such a mapping uh, so and, and what we saw and I put a link to the previous video is that a unit circle in the z plane under a mapping of the form w equals z to the power of n or in the specific case w equals z to the power of 3 would also map to another unit circle in the W plane. Um, um, however, uh, there were some interesting features uh, of this mapping that we explored uh, in detail. And just as a reminder, um, some of these features were that, uh, let's say you look at the point z equals 1. And I'm sorry, just as a reminder, uh, the real axis in the W plane, we label with the symbol u, the imaginary axis with the symbol v, and likewise for the z plane, the real axis with the symbol x, and the imaginary axis with the symbol y. Um, so, so if you look at the point z equals 1, uh, the point um, z equals e to the power of i 2 pi over 3, and the point z equals e to the power of i 4 pi over 3, we saw that all these three points, which actually lie on the vertices of an equilateral triangle, um, all these three points, or, or all these three vertices, map to the same point w equals 1 in the double plane. So their images uh, coincide at the point w equals 1 in the double plane. This is, here is the point w equals 1. Um, and a useful analogy we sort of invoked when we, when we talked about this mapping is that uh, if, you if you imagine yourself walking along this unit circle in the z plane, uh, then by the time you cover this particular arc that goes from z equals 1 to z equals e to pi 2 pi over 3, your image has actually completed one full circle in the double plane. Likewise, when you complete the second arc from e to the power i 2 pi over 3 to e to the power i 4 pi over 3, you, you complete another circle in the double plane, and likewise for the third arc. And, 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 and in this particular, uh, for this particular mapping, w equals zq, your image actually is walking three times faster than the rate at which you're walking along the unit circle in the z plane. And for a generic n, uh, your image is walking n times faster, uh, for n some positive integer greater than 1. Uh, now, so here we focused on the case where n was some positive integer. Um, but what if n was not a positive integer, but let's say a rational number, or even more generally an irrational number? Um, and, 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 and one of the features that comes about uh, by starting actually this mapping itself, uh, or, or that, that sort of carries over uh, the, the geometry of this mapping, is, uh, is, to, is to look at, uh, uh, is, is to, is to look at Look at the question that is there an inverse mapping that takes us from the W plane to the Z plane? And that naturally takes us to studying uh, mappings of the form W equals Z to the power of P for some, where P could be some arbitrary number, a rational number, an integer, or an irrational number. And the reason that comes about is because we have looked at the mapping W equals ZQ as a direct mapping from the Z plane to the W plane. But if you ask the question that is there a mapping or a function that takes us from the W plane to the Z plane? then we are naturally led, naturally led to consider the inverse mapping for this. And the inverse mapping for this would be of the form z equals w to the power of 1 over 3. And, and we see that here, we already have a, a fractional power or a rational number in this case um, as, the, as the inverse mapping, if it exists, that will take us from the w plane to the z plane. Um, and, and, and actually some of the features that comes about when we generalize this from n being positive integer to n being some uh, any general number p uh, can be understood by looking at this inverse mapping uh, to begin with, which will give us a taste of what is to come. And then we sort of take this mapping head on and talk more about this in future videos. So what is it that comes about when we start talking about the inverse mapping in this case? which involves a function of the form z equals w to the power of 1 by 3. So one of the things that it involves that comes about uh, immediately is that if you look at the point w equals 1, um, we, uh, we've seen that the point z equals 1 
and the points e equals e to by 2 pi over 3 and the points z e equals e to by 4 pi over 3 all map to the point w equals 1. Therefore, if an inverse mapping is to exist, then the point w equals 1 will have three distinct images. Or in other words, we will need to invert uh, the direction of these arrows. And what we will find is that for associated with the point w equals 1, there are three distinct images. Um, now, if you recall the definition of what a function is, a function uh, is a mapping that takes us from one set to the other, such that every element in set 1 has a unique image in set 2. Uh, the, the images of different elements might coincide, but all of them have a unique image in, this, in, in the second set, in the image set. However, in this case, that, if, if, if you look at the direct mapping, it's, it, it qualifies the uh, definition of what a function is. But the inverse mapping, the point w equals 1 actually has ends up having three distinct images. And by the conventional definition of function, it's not a function. And this is where uh, uh, a very beautiful and interesting feature of complex analysis comes into uh, a picture, which is we will not uh, we'll not say that let's not study this function because it's not a function by the conventional definition. Rather, what we do is we generalize the notion of function itself and start talking about what are called multi-functions, or rather functions where uh, associated with, with points in one of the sets, you could have multiple images in the image set, as it's happening in this particular case. And, and this particular feature comes about, especially in cases where uh, you consider mappings of the form w equals z to the power of p, where p is actually not no longer an integer, if you don't restrict yourselves to p being an integer. Because if you have an integer, we've already studied that in detail, and we saw that uh, it, 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 we, we call, it qualifies the definition of what a function is and we've analyzed how uh, it behaves on, let's say, the unit circle in the z-plane. Um, whereas for the in, in inverse mapping, we see that uh, it involves a fractional power and, and associated with elements in the, in, the, in, the, in the W set in this case, there are multiple images in the z-plane. Um, so, so, so in this case, uh, we are sort of looking at direct and inverse mappings, and that might sound a little confusing. So, in, in the future video, let's take this, take up these cases head on, and let's look at mappings of the form z uh, w equals z to power p, where p is. Let's begin with the case where uh, p could be some fractional number, uh, rational numbers of the form one third, one fourth, one fifth, and so on, uh, and see uh, see some of the features that comes about. And then in future videos, we'll also, also talk about irrational bars. Um, so, um, so hope, uh, hope to see you in future videos and hope you'll find this discussion interesting. So thanks for watching.